السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين So last time we started talking about our new series and we we talked about the first of the ten outer actions that would draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, uh, those actions will also get us more prepared for the day when we are going to leave this dunya on that day the only thing that we would be thinking of is ya allah be pleased with us so this this series is inshallah going to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and more prepared for that day. In this dunya, there are so many less fortunate people who do not have sufficient uh, means to live with all their needs available. So these people suffer. And their life, their lives are full of misery. But by donating to these people, we're helping them to alleviate the immense struggle they are facing in this dunya. So the outer action that we are going to talk about today is the zakah or the sadaqa. So what is the zakah? The zakah is the third pillar of Islam. And uh, it's a form of worship that involves wealth. It is obligatory to pay charity, to pay zakah in Islam. And it is obligatory upon Muslims to pay a portion of their earnings once in a, in a lunar uh, hijri year. And this amount of money, this portion, is paid to certain people with certain conditions that can be checked, of course, in the fiqh of zakah. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about this fiqh or uh, just to mention a little bit about it but we will talk about zakah in general so as i mentioned earlier this series is not talking about fiqh it's not a fiqh class it's beyond the fiqh of the worship but i will touch on a little bit of what the word zakah means, uh, what is the value of nisab, and who to pay the uh, zakah to. Okay, so to start with, uh, let's ask ourselves, what does the word zakah mean? The word zakah is... Uh, it derived from an Arabic word, zakah. So what does zakah mean? Zakah means cleanliness, purification, increase, growth, righteousness, blessings, and praise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 261, 
مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل في كل سنبلة مئة حبة والله يضاعف لمن يشاء والله واسع عليم The example of those who spend their wealth for the sake of Allah is like a seed of grain. So this seed of grain grows, uh, uh, grows seven spikes. And in each spike is a hundred grains. So imagine. So one, one grain, now imagine how much it is. And Allah multiplies his reward for whom he wills. Wallahu wasi'un alim. Allah is all-encompassing and he is all-knowing. So we said that um, zakah is obligatory upon Muslims to pay a portion of their earnings. So how much do they pay? Zakah is a must if the wealth of the Muslim reaches the nisab. So this is, this is when we pay the zakah. So we, when we want to know how much to pay, we have to ask, do we have the nisab or not? So what is the nisab? What is the value of the nisab? The value of the nisab is determined through today's value of either gold or silver. What does this mean? So if we have uh, money and we want to know, do we have to pay zakah on this um, money that we have or not? So we say 87.48 grams, which is equal to three ounces, is the nisab by the gold standard. So if you have three ounces the 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 uh, weight of three ounces in gold, then you pay the nisab, and this this is eighty seven point four point uh, forty eight grams of uh, of gold. Some people would would uh, would say we can uh, um, get to know if we have the nisab or not by paying by by uh, silver standard so if you own if you have 612.36 grams which is equal to 21 ounces uh, of silver so you, we say 6 6 612.36 uh, grams is nisab by the silver standard so now we know that if we have this amount, this this uh, much of uh, gold or this much of uh, an isab, then we have to pay the zakah. Who should the zakah be paid for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, specified the groups of people who we can pay the zakah for. So he said in Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 60, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَالْغَارِمِينَ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ فَرِيضَةً مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ So the zakah expenditures the people who deserve the, the zakah the people who we can give zak our zakah to are as follows allah is counting them allah is listing these people he says they are the poor and the needy what's the difference between the poor and the needy the poor are the people who have no wealth nor income the needy are the people who have no assets and whose income does not cover, cover their basic needs. 
So now imagine with the with uh, the situations that we live in, with the inflation, with the wars, with everything, so many people are are needy. So many people need help. Their income does not cover their, their ba the basic needs they 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 want to have. So this is al fuqara'i wal masakin wal amilin alayha. Those employed to collect the zakah. If those are in need, we have to. They are of the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified as a group who can accept the zakah. And also uh, for bringing hearts together for Islam. So these are al-mu'allafati qulubuhum. Wa fi al-riqab. Wa fi al-riqab are, uh, uh, is, so the zakah is paid for freeing captives or slaves. Wal gharimeen. Al gharimeen are those in debt. وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ Ibn al-Sabil is the standard traveler who needs help. How? There's a traveler, he has money. Even if he is wealthy, he lost all his money. Then you can give him of the zakah uh, uh, money. So these are the groups of people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specified to uh, take the zakah. Faridatan min Allah. This is an obligation imposed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu alimun hakim. Allah is knowing and Allah is wise. Well, Uh, let's talk about the groups of people who spend for the sake of Allah. There are levels, there are stages. The first level is al-aqwiya. Those are the, the uh, determined, the strong ones. So what do they, they do when they want to spend for the sake of Allah? They spend all they have, all they, they, they own for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do not leave anything for themselves. What are the, these called? Al-Aqwiya, the strong ones. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu when he uh, uh, brought his... Uh, money to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he brought all he has. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, what did you leave for your family? Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, I left them. Taraktu lahumullaha wa rasoolah. I left them Allah and his messenger. So imagine the strength of the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, who gave everything for the sake of Allah, and he did not care that after that he will be poor. So he was of those who spent for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without caring, without caring about being poor. So this is the first group of People who spend for the sake of Allah, who pay for the sake of Allah. The second group is the mediums, the uh, people in the middle. So they, they keep some for themselves and they spend. So why do they keep it? It's not all for themselves. It's they keep some if if someone comes and asks for charities, then they will have something to give. So it's not only for themselves, but for, to give also for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
The third group is the weak, the weak group. They just spend what they have to spend. They just give, if they have to, to pay, for example, $100 in, uh, in zakah, they pay just 100 zakah, $100. They do not increase, they do not decrease. They pay the exact amount. So of these three groups, you see that the first group, they spend, they spend as much as they can and they show their love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling his orders of spending and not keeping for themselves. So this is the true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he gives an order, then they hasten to fulfill the order in full. So a person might not be able to be of this group, but he has to do him his, his uh, best not to be also of the third group, but to be in the middle. So try to spend something every day for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And spending, by the way, is not by money. Some people would say, we are so poor. So how can we spend? There are so many ways of spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-kalimatu tayyibatu sadaqa. The, the good word is a charity. When you say something, say, try always to say the best you can. Good, choose good words to, to people when you talk to them. It's a charity to, to say good things. Ziyaratul Maridi Sadaqa. Visiting the sick people is also a charity, is also spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qada'u hajati nasi sadaqa. Also, taking care of people's affairs is also a sadaqa. So, it's not only to spend with money. Some people spend uh, also from their time. They specify uh, an hour of, uh, 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 of a week, uh, a few hours of the week, just to help people, just to do things good for people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is also a way of spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we pay zakah, we have to pay attention to five points. The first one is uh, to keep it secret. And uh, Allah, uh, say, once Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, which of the sadaqah is, uh, is better? Is it to keep it secret or is it to show it to people? So what did... Uh, what did uh, the what was the answer? Sayyidina Muhammad uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of course, uh, said, "In tukdu sadaqati fa ni'im ma hi, wa in tukhfuha wa tuqtuha al fuqara fa huwa khayr lakum, wa yukfir ankum min sayyatikum." So, if you disclose your charitable expenditures, they are good. But if you conceal them and give them to the poor, it's better for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove from you some of your misdeeds. 
he will wipe some of your sins. And Allah, with what you do, is fully acquainted. Allah knows. So which one is better? Is it the Sadaqatul uh, Sir am Sadaqatul Jahr? Which one is better? To, to give and to show people that you are paying or just to, to give people and uh, not, uh, not to show them. Go to your intention. Check your intention. Why is it that you are giving? Is it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or what? If it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is just to encourage people, to encourage people that uh, you are giving so they will give, they will be encouraged to give, then do it outwardly. And at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions used, when they used to meet, they would ask each other, how many pages of Quran did you read? How many rak'ahs did you pray? What charity did you pay? They're not just showing off. They want to compete with each others. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ In this, with these good actions, this is the way that people should compete. So now you pay the zakah. What else should you, should you be away, uh, aware of? You should be, uh, you should not mention it to the poor every now and then. Uh, to make the poor uh, feel that you are better than him, that you are a giver, that he is a, a taker, that you are expecting a thank you note from him, that you want him to keep uh, thanking you for the good thing you did for him. You cannot do that. Just pay it and pay it for the sake of Allah and forget about it. Put it with the good deeds that you are accumulating to get the reward on the day of judgment. So if the zakah purifies the heart, and if the poor person took it from you, then he is the reason for you to purify your heart. You should be thanking him. You should not be waiting for him to, to, to thank you. The third thing is that you have to give it from the best of what you have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 267. He said, وَلَا تَيَمَّمُوا الْخَبِيثَ مِنْهُ تُنْفِقُونَ وَلَسْتُمْ بِآخِذِيهِ إِلَّا إِلَّا أَنْ تُغْمِضُوا فِيهِ Do not aim, do not choose the defective therefrom. Do not take the defective thing and, and give it as a sadaqah. No. Why? If this same thing that you are giving is given to you, you will not, you will not be taking it except with a closed eye. And you won't be happy to take it. It's defective. It's not, it's not good. So when you want to pay your zakah, when you want to pay for uh, 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 zakah, for for example, for the for your fruit, for for then choose the best of your fruit and give it to people. The zakah of the cattle, choose the best of the cattle and give it to people. Then. 
if you are giving, then give with a happy face and give it happily. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Sabaqa dirhamun mi'ata alfi dirham. One dirham is better if you give it than more, more, more than a hundred thousand dirham. How? How can one, one dirham or one dollar be more, uh, more than uh, or be better than giving a hundred thousand dollars? When you give the one dollar in uh, while you are happy you are giving it, then it's better than giving a hundred thousand dollar with uh, uh, while you are you're doing it hating that you are paying this amount. So you when you give, you have to give happily. And sometimes, Poor people give zakah to those people who are poorer than them or give charity to those who are poorer than them. They might not have the nisab, as we said, but they like to help other people who are in need also. They live the misfortune of this uh, issue. So they want to help those who are less fortunate than themselves. Now, when you, when you want to pay your zakah, give it to someone who deserves it, to, uh, uh, to someone who is pious, not to someone who goes to, uh, to, to, to drink wine with it. No. So when you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you feel happy. Do you know why? Because you made other people's feel happy. So you, you helped those less fortunate people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps those who help other people. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wallahu fi awni al-abdi ma dama al-abdu fi awni akhi. Allah will help his servant as long as this servant is helping other servants, other, other people. So now what is, what is the reward that we get from paying the zakah or from paying the sadaqah? There are different levels of rewards. Let's start with the person who paid the zakah. So, uh, this person who paid the zakah, he has a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this reward is a dunya reward so that his wealth will multiply. We mentioned in the, at the beginning when we just started that if when you give one, one grain, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it for hundreds, hundreds of rewards. So your fortune will increase. So this is on the level of the person who paid the zakah. And that person will feel the joy, will feel rejoiced because he helped other people. And he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to help him uh, on the day of judgment. So this is the first level. Now, you will relieve some of the misery of the person who received the zakah. And that person as soon as he gets this zakah money, this help, he will make dua for you. No, wait. His heart will make the dua for you. So that person is in need. And when he gets the zakah, then he will feel happy 
And when someone feels happy, then he will make dua. He will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has given him. And he will make dua for the, for the one who gave him. So this is the dunya reward. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a special reward. On the day of judgment, Allah will say to you, you showed generosity, but I will show you the real generosity. And what is the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Simple, easy. The reward is has not not an eye has ever seen, not an ear has ever heard of, and not an idea that a person or uh, uh, something that would come to the mind of a person. Whatever you will think of, it will be something different. It will be something better. So this is Allah's way of rewarding his servants. Now, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? Let's, let's have uh, 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 a, few, a few examples, a few ayahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us in the Quran to pay the zakah. And every time there is a mention of the zakah, it's preceded by prayers. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 43, Establish your prayer and give zakah and bow with those who bow in worshiping and in the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you... Uh, perform your salah and when you pay your zakah, what happens? Establish prayer and give zakah. And whatever good and, uh, you put forward for yourselves, you will find it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will highly reward you for everything that you do. When, whenever you do any, any speck of a good thing, then you will find it. You will be highly rewarded for it on the day of judgment. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and sees everything that we do. And he will reward us for everything. So what's the other uh, reward that Allah has mentioned? Indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds and establish prayer and give zakah will have the reward with their Lord. And there will be no fear coming concerning them, nor there will grieve. La khawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun. I'll tell you a story about giving charity. Uh, Alays ibn Sa'd is a merchant who trades uh, in honey. One day, a shipment was delivered to him. It was full of uh, big bars of, uh, barrels of uh, honey. And an old lady came to him and she was having a small, con small container and she said, can you fill this uh, container with uh, honey? And he said, no, no, please don't ask. So the lady left. After that, a lathe ordered his uh, helper. He ordered him to follow the lady and to know where she lives. And to take a whole barrel of honey 
with her, for her. So his, his helper looked at him. And he said, she came and she asked just a little bit. You refused. And now you are giving her a whole thing, a whole big thing. And a lath looked at him and he said, oh boy, she asked what she wanted, but we give what we want to give. So when you give, try to give the best you can. You know, we mentioned it earlier. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you on the day of judgment, you, are, you showed my people, you showed my slaves your generosity. I will show you the real generosity. So if the, if the one who gives would realize that he is giving or what, what he is giving is going to be listed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the person who gives will, will be happier than the person who takes. Remember when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam slaughtered a sheep and he distributed all except for one portion. And when he came back to his uh, home, he said to uh, his wife, Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, ma baqiya minha ya Aisha? What, what is left of the, of the sheep that we, we slaughtered? She said, what we have, what is left, is the shoulder. And he said, no, Aisha, no. All of it is, uh, is uh, uh, saved. All of it will be, we will be rewarded for, except for the, except for the shoulder. All of it was given as, in, uh, as a charity. So all of it will, was saved for us. We got the reward for all of it. This, is, this was the question. Now, uh, let's again talk about the benefits of sadaqah. So a sadaqah is uh, a door for heaven. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, في الجنة ثمانية أبواب منها باب يسمى الريان لا يدخله إلا الصائمون. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in paradise, in heaven, there are eight gates among which uh, a gate is called الريان which only those who fast will enter. So this is about fasting. And when you fast, what do you do? You give charity. Do you know why? Because uh, in uh, Ramadan, the reward is multiplied. And that's why when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, Ayyu sadaqati afdal? Qala sadaqatun fi Ramadan. So they asked Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which charity is best? And he said, charity in Ramadan. The reward of all we do is multiplied in Ramadan. So when we fast, we want to do the best that we can because the reward is multiplied. Now, <clears throat> uh, also, as what happens? The uh, charity shields the one who paid it on the day of judgment. We all know the hadith uh, that Abu Hurairah narrated that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, سَبْعَتٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ So he listed these seven uh, groups of people. So 
uh, this is what Abu Huraira narrated that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, seven people will be shaded by Allah under his shade on the day when there will be no shade except his shade. And he listed the seven, the seven group of people. And one of these groups, he mentioned the rest of the hadith, which says, and a man who gives charity so secretly that his left hand does not know what his right hand has given. So nobody knows how much he gave. Nobody knows how much he paid in charity. So this is the, uh, the reward of the charity as a shield, as a shade on the day of judgment. Also, Anas radiallahu anhu said, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, إن الصدقة لا تطفئ غضب الرب وتدفع ميتة السوء. So Anas reported that Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, صدقة or charity, at, uh, uh, at, uh, so, so this charity appeases the Lord's anger and averts an evil death. One more thing. If your loved ones are dead, if your father is dead, if your mother is dead, slaughter something. Give it for, for them with their name. Or pay, pay money for them. Do something for them. So the sadaqah is the best that is gifted to your deceased loved ones. The sadaqah purifies the soul. The sadaqah brings happiness and joy. The sadaqah, the charity, the zikah, paying for the sake of Allah, is a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe out sins with. If you want something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to make dua for something, do give some sadaqah and then make your dua. Uh, also, if you have uh, someone who is sick and you want to uh, to uh, to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to heal him, to give him uh, good health again, just just do some charity, pay some money, uh, slaughter something, do anything you can, just give. Give sadaqa for that person. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Dawu mardakum bis sadaqa. Pay sadaqa for your sick ones. And make dua. So, if you want something, you just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pay while you are happy that you're paying for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to pay attention to one more thing, that when we pay, we have to pay our zakah and our sadaqah, our charities, pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ امْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِ So Umar ibn al-Khattab said that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu said the value of an action depends on the intention behind it. 
So a man will be rewarded only what for what he intended. So if he, for example, migrated for the sake of Allah, then his migration is for the sake of Allah. And if he migrated just to, to gain a worldly advantage or to marry a woman, then he will get what he, what he migrated for. So when you, when you pay, when you pay your charity, your zakah, your, make it for the sake of Allah purely. Because Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had warned us. If, if someone does a good deed and his intention was that people would talk about him. If he is generous, then people would say, oh, this person is generous. If he fights for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants people to say, oh, he is brave. Then he will get what he wanted, but he will lose his reward in the day after. So when you do your charity, just make it pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else. And uh, do you know another way of doing uh, a sadaqah? It is to, to pass the knowledge that you have learned. And this is the best sadaqa that you do is by sharing what you learned. So you learn the best of you is the one who learned the Quran and then he, he delivered it to people. He gave it to people. He taught it to people. So this is a way of sadaqah. This is a way of sadaqah. So the sadaqah of the kalam is that, the sadaqah of speech is that a person would pass the knowledge that he has learned so it will be a continuous sadaqah for him. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَاتَ إِذَا مَاتَ ابْنُ آدَمَ انْقَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ صَدَقَةٌ جَارِيَةٌ أَوْ عِلْمٌ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ أَوْ وَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ يَدْعُو لَهُ So when a man dies, his deeds come to an end. Except for three things. A continuous charity, knowledgeable uh, knowledge by which people de uh, derive benefit, and pious son who pay, who prays for him. So sadaqa jariya. What is a sadaqa jariya? What is a continuous charity? Continuous charity is like helping or uh, uh, giving some money for people who are building a mosque. Everyone who pays in that mosque you get some of that reward. So you helped spreading Islam. You help people pray in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You help people read Quran in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is continuous charity. If you help in building a, a school, if you help in teaching people to memorize Quran, if you help in building a school for uh, um, uh, 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 teaching Quran. So all of this is considered as continuous charity. Or if you spread knowledge, this is also a, a, a sadaqa that you will be rewarded uh, for even after you die. Because people are benefiting from something that you did during your life. You raised your child to be pious, and to, may, to pray for you. This is a, a good thing that you have done. So, the 
just to spread the knowledge. You learned something, give it. So, paying Zika now, uh, paying charity is a, an outer action that starts from deeply from the heart. How do you feel when you pay your zakah? You should feel very happy that you are doing you are doing something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you to do and you know that you will be highly rewarded for 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 this action in dunya and in akhirah in dunya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase your wealth and will multiply it and will replace what you what you paid multiple times and in akhirah by getting the reward for that so this is a little bit of talking a little bit covering the topic of zakah zakah charity how how do we what do we understand of it it's not only money it's not only giving money there are so many ways of giving charity with this we come to an end of our session for today and inshallah we'll meet next week and until we meet i send my salam and your salam to sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh